What's happening in online marketing in 2016 that we might not have been able to predict two or three years ago? Hmm, that's a great question. I think that we see the the real. I mean, from some of the recent earnings reports, that um, we see the uh, that Facebook is is really finally kind of uh, found their groove in terms of. Um, generating ads and in fact we have some clients who are moving money from AdWords to Facebook because they're finding more effective um, more effective uh, cost per leads over there which is pretty interesting I didn't really think uh, you know from some of our early testing a couple years ago I wasn't I think a lot of people thought that would happen but there were definitely some questions so I think that's a big trend but um, as we just saw with Google they had had a couple pretty flat um, lower growth than expected, but they have also been working really hard on um, innovating with their AdWords product, and so a lot of new stuff happening there. So those are the two big ones that we deal with on a daily basis. Tell me about the 2016 survey that is out uh, and the data and the surprises there. Yeah, okay. Um, so we try to get uh, Put together interesting stats and and put together surveys and ebooks um, a couple times a year. And when the team was brainstorming ideas, you know, there's a lot of obviously a lot of uh, people in the digital marketing space, and um, and so we were trying to come up with something a little different that maybe hadn't been tested before. And we stumbled upon this career builder survey about things that um, employers are looking for from a social media standpoint, and we looked at what their findings were and kind of looked at what we had seen as when in our hiring and just looking around our friends and family and realized, gosh, I wonder how many people out there um, really are doing the, uh, you know, are, are doing things on social media that could impact their prospects of, uh, of either finding or potentially keeping a job. It looks like that um, at least a chunk of the respondents in this survey do things that they maybe shouldn't? Correct. That's that's what we found, yes. So, um, you know, for example, someone pictures themselves or has video drinking. Right. Um, what, are, what are the issues with that from, from the employer side? Well, I mean, I think this is where we have to – we – built on the career builder survey that basically said that, you know, in, in their cases, um, you know, in, in reading about this issue as we built up the survey, that um, in many cases, you know, depending, obviously, um, once it's all about the you know, sort of the total um, volume of social media posts. But if that's 90 percent of what you do, then I think the company may surmise that that's a a pretty big part of who you are and maybe that doesn't fit with their values and so you know I think that it may be un subconscious biases but or maybe directly uh, d direct what people are looking at but I think companies can decide that they're not going to hire um, based on some of these some of these uh, uh, comments or the things you're doing in fact I'm just looking at this the study here um, yeah, the basically top five types of content that are a turnoff to employers. And again, this is from the career builder side of things. Um, people, 46% of people uh, of employers said provocative or inappropriate photographs, videos, or information. 43% um, said information about candidate drinking or using drugs. So, you know, those are things that I think as we look around and, you know, I see friends and family on Facebook, there's a lot of people that spend, that put a lot of information up on the web, uh, up on Facebook that, may come back to bite them down the road. So we were kind of curious to look at how many, when we surveyed and talked to the, to the groups that we talked to, how many of them acknowledged that, yeah, we are doing this. And like, I, I think as you alluded to, like we're seeing that, you know, in terms of how often do you post pictures, videos of yourself using alcohol, you know, we had about, um, you know, 30 or so percent that came back, 37 percent that came back and and said that that's either occasionally or I do it basically. So that was what we were we thought we found interesting. I mean, it looks like um, those answers to me are, are you know on why this sort of reckless behavior persists are, are the most telling. Uh, the number one answer was, you know, my social media accounts are private. Is there an unrealistic expectation of privacy in the social media world? 
I think that's a great question. I think that, you know, when we were kind of debating this internally, we're like, well, I can, you know, there's a lot of tools Facebook has to, and especially on Facebook that I can lock down my posts. But I think the reality is that there's been stories over the last years where settings get changed in Facebook, defaults get changed, people aren't aware of it. Of course, there's the ability to screenshot things. So I think the the idea that you can completely, that what you post on the web with all the ways, all the things that are being archived and indexed out there is is going to be private is probably not true. So I would certainly not have that expectation. And there was at least some indication that these folks had experienced at one point or another somebody or themselves doing a screenshot of something or maybe even using using a screenshot against a friend. So there's that right. issue too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, I, I, that's what I was saying on the privacy side. I mean, the certainly the the idea that, you know, even with things like Snapchat that you that you're completely um, uh, private and things are really getting deleted, I think, again, is something that I just wouldn't trust. And this is all about, you know, this is all about um, just good being careful and being responsible. And I think a lot of people probably don't really think about when they're out having a good time, like, oh, something I do today could actually impact my ability to get a job or to keep my job. And that's, I think, what was was surprising. I recently spoke with a lawyer who uh, has a little business in which he's mostly talking to high school students now about social media literacy. Um, is it your sense that maybe as time goes on, there's going to be a little bit more maturity about all of this? <laughs> well, it's funny because um, my my daughter recently turned 13 and we got her a phone and I did some research and found this telephone contract. And one of the things that, that it said in the, the contract that, that, you know, we ultimately went through with her was that, you know, I, things that I do on this phone can probably will will can potentially hurt me in the long run and in ways that I may not even know today. And so I think, um, yeah, you're dealing with, especially when you're talking about younger people, you're dealing with people that just, you know, you're just, they're just not mature. They're not thinking this is going to impact my earning capability or my capability of like reaching, doing what I want in my career. So I, I would agree with that. I, I, I think it's hard for youngsters to really, or younger people to really know um, the impact. I mean, one of the questions I think that impacts those of us interested in social media and marketing is whether or not there's kind of a, a social cultural normative shift happening, you know, mm -hmm. because of the younger generation. Right. Um, that is there this feeling that some of the things that people in my generation would have said, mm, I don't like the, the looks of that might pass uh, now or in the future. Again, that's a really good question. In fact, I think one of the things we mentioned in our in our write up of this was that uh, we found a few people talking about how the people that, taking slang, for example, or internet slang that people use when uh, on their social media profiles. You know, I think one of the things that that people said is that the people today evaluating resumes, making hiring decisions, may look at it as you said uh, through a different lens than someone who today. Um, is going to be making those decisions three or four or five years from now. So I do think it probably will change. Um, and I think some of these things are probably not as big a deals um, today as they would be, but but it's hard to hard to know, you know, and I think again, um, it's it's so much like case by case. what what company, what place do you really want to are you are you ultimately going to want to work with? And, and what is their view at the time you decide you want to work there? That's kind of unknown. 